we shall commence this module by discussing about the foreign exchange market. A foreign exchange market is a market where foreign currencies are exchanged. In a foreign exchange market, investors buy foreign currencies with domestic currencies and sell foreign currencies for domestic currencies. Hence, it's a market where the claims to foreign monies are bought and sold for domestic currency. Exporters sell foreign currencies for domestic currencies and importers buy foreign currencies with domestic currencies. According to Ellsworth, a foreign exchange market consists of all those individuals and institutions that buy and sell foreign exchange which can be stated as foreign money or any liquid claim on foreign money. Foreign exchange transactions result in inflow and outflow of foreign exchange. Foreign exchange markets comprise of banks, commercial companies, central banks, investment management firms, hedge funds and retail forex brokers and investors. The forex market is considered the biggest financial market in the world. It is significant to see that the foreign exchange market is not a solitary exchange, rather it is composed of a global array of computers that connect investors from all parts of the world. The foreign exchange market, also known as forex or FX or currency market, involves the exchange of one currency for another. Earlier than 1996, the forex market was limited to the reach of big corporate banks and international institutions. However, now it can be accessed by all types of traders and speculators. The average daily turnover in the global forex market has now reached 5.3 US dollar trillion up from 4 trillion dollars in 2010. The latest Bank of International Settlements Triennial Survey mentions. The market is progressing at a rapid pace as investors gain more information and develop more. After studying this module, you shall be able to know about what is the foreign exchange market and about the structure of the Indian foreign exchange market, know about the components of the Indian foreign exchange market, comprehend about the significance of the foreign exchange market, abreast yourself with the meaning of exchange rate and how it is determined, know about the various exchange rate systems. Let us now understand the exchange rate, definition and determination. Financial managers of multinational companies that carry out international business must regularly keep a watch on exchange rate since their cash flows significantly depend on them. They need to understand what factors affect the exchange rate so that they can anticipate how exchange rates might alter in response to the specific conditions. An exchange rate is the prevailing market price at which a particular currency can be exchanged for another one. For instance, if the exchange rate of a US dollar to Canadian dollar is 1.60 dollar, it signifies that one American dollar can be exchanged for 1.6 Canadian dollars. Exchange rate is also known as the currency quotation, the foreign exchange rate or forex rate. Exchange rate equilibrium. Albeit it is easy to gauge by how much the value of a currency changed, it is quite difficult to explain why the value changed or to forecast how it might change in the future. To achieve either of these objectives, the concept of an equilibrium exchange rate must be understood along with the factors that affect the equilibrium rate. Before considering why an exchange rate changes, realize that an exchange rate at a given point of time represents the price of a currency or the rate at which a particular currency can be exchanged for another. Like any other product sold in markets, the price of a currency is the product of demand for that currency and its supply. Thus, for each possible price of a British pound, there is a corresponding demand for pounds and a corresponding supply of pounds for sale. At a particular point of time, a currency should exhibit the price at which the demand for that currency is equals to the supply and this represents the equilibrium exchange rate. Of course, conditions can change over time causing the supply or demand for a given currency to adjust and thereby causing movement in the currency's price. Demand for a currency. The demand curve is sloping downward since the corporations and individuals in the US will be encouraged to buy more British goods when the pound is worth less since fewer dollars will be required to obtain the desired amount of pounds and vice versa. Supply of a currency. There is a positive relationship between the value of the British pound and the quantity of the British pounds for sale which can be explained as follows. If the value of pound is high, British consumers and firms are more inclined to buy US goods. Thus they supply a greater number of pounds to the market to be exchanged for dollars. 
In contrast, when the value of pound is low, the supply of pounds is smaller, reflecting less British desire to obtain US goods. Equilibrium The demand and supply schedules for British pounds are combined in exhibit. At an exchange rate of $1.50, the quantity demanded would exceed the supply of pound. Consequently, there will be a shortage of pounds at that exchange rate. At an exchange rate of $1.60, the demand for pounds will be lower than the supply of pounds for sale. Therefore, the banks providing exchange services will have a surplus of pounds at that exchange rate. According to the exhibit, the equilibrium exchange rate is $1.55 because this rate equates the quantity of pounds demanded with the supply of pounds for sale. Factors that influence exchange rates the equilibrium exchange rate will change at different points of time as and when there is a change in the demand and supply schedule. The factors due to which demand and supply schedules tend to change are mentioned here by relating each factor's influence to the demand and supply schedules. The following equation summarizes the factors that can influence a currency's spot rate. E is equals to a function of change in INF, change in INT, change in INC, change in GC and change in EXP where E is the percentage change in the spot rate. Change in INF, change in the differential between domestic countries inflation and the foreign countries inflation. Change in INT, change in the differential between domestic countries interest rate and the foreign countries interest rate. Change in INC, Change in the differential between the income level of domestic country and the income level of the foreign country. Change in GC means change in the government controls. And change in EXP means the change in the expectations of the future exchange rates. Now we will discuss the exchange rate systems. Exchange rate systems can be classified on the basis of the degree of government control over the determination of exchange rates. Exchange rate systems basically fall into one of the following categories, each of which is discussed in turn. First, fixed. Second, freely floating. Third, managed floating. And fourth, pegged. Fixed exchange rate system from 1945 to 1973. In a fixed exchange rate system, exchange rates are not allowed to fluctuate even if these are allowed to change. These can change only with specific narrow boundaries. A fixed exchange rate system requires much intervention of the central bank in order to maintain a currency's value within the narrow boundaries. In general, the central bank has to offset any imbalance between supply and demand conditions for its currency to prohibit its value from changing. In some situations, the central bank may reset a fixed exchange rate. That is, it will devalue or reduce its currency value against other currencies. A central bank's action to devalue a currency in a fixed exchange rate system are termed as devaluation, while the term depreciation represents the decrease in a currency's value that is permitted to change in response to the market conditions. In a fixed exchange rate system, a central bank may also revalue, that is increase the value of its currency against the other currencies. Revaluation refers to an upward adjustment of the exchange rate by the central bank while the term appreciation represents the increase in the value of the currency that is allowed to change in response to the market conditions. Freely floating exchange rate system. In a freely floating exchange rate system, market forces determine the exchange rate without the intervention by the government. Whereas a fixed exchange rate system permits no flexibility for exchange rate movements, a freely floating exchange rate system provides for total flexibility. Under this system, whenever the demand and supply schedules for that currency change, the exchange rates get changed accordingly. Managed float exchange rate system. The exchange rate system prevalent today for some currencies lies somewhere between the fixed and the freely floating. It reflects the freely floating system in that exchange rates are permitted to change on a continuous basis and no official boundaries exist. It is similar to the fixed rate system in that government can and sometimes do interfere to not let their currencies significantly move in a particular direction. This type of system is known as managed float or dirty float as opposed to a clean float where rates float freely without government intervention. Pegged exchange rate system. Some countries use a pegged exchange rate arrangement under which their home currency's value is pegged to one foreign currency or to an index of currencies. Albeit the value of home currency is fixed and constant in relation to the foreign currency to which it is pegged, it moves in line with the currency against other currencies. 
some governments peg their currencies value so that of a stable currency such as the dollar because that forces the value of their currency to be stable first this forces their currency's exchange rate with the dollar to be fixed second their currency will move against non dollar currencies by the same degree as the dollar since the dollar is relatively more stable than most currencies it will make their currency more stable than the most currencies moving on to discuss about the instruments of foreign exchange market a financial instrument is a financial medium such as bills of exchange bond currency stock etc which is used for borrowing purposes in relation to the foreign exchange market the various financial instruments that are commonly used are as follows first spot transaction a spot transaction is an agreement to buy or sell a currency at the current exchange rate to state otherwise it is an exchange of one currency for another the transaction is generally settled within two business days after the trade date and involves a cash exchange instead of the creation of a longer term contract the currencies are exchanged at the spot rate at the time of the contract currency traders use spot transactions to make profits in the same way as equity or commodity traders buying low and selling high second forwards forwards transactions involve buying or selling of a foreign currency at a future date not less than 3 days at a price determined today in short a buyer and a seller agree to trade currency at a particular time and at a particular exchange rate regardless of the prevailing exchange rate at the time of actual transaction by locking in a specific exchange rate the trader is protected against currency fluctuations for the term of the contract forward contracts are not standardized and are not traded on exchange third futures a futures contract is a forward contract with a predetermined currency amount maturity date and interest amount a futures contract is an agreement to buy or sell a currency in a designated future month at a price determined by the buyer and the seller fourth swap in a swap transaction one currency is exchanged for another for a specific length of time The transaction is reversed at a predetermined future date in which the original amounts are swapped. The two exchanges occur at different exchange rates. It is the difference in the two exchange rates that determines the swap price. Swaps have various maturity periods. A swap is another form of forward contract. Fifth, options. A currency option is similar to a futures contract as it involves a fixed currency transaction at some future point of time. A currency option gives the holder the right but not the obligation to either buy from the option writer or to sell to the option writer a stated quantity of one currency in exchange for another currency at a fixed rate of exchange. The fixed rate of exchange is called the strike price. Now we will discuss the players in the Indian foreign exchange market. The structure of the foreign exchange market in India includes the following. First, authorized person The RBI provided licenses to three types of persons to transact with public at different levels. They are authorized dealers, authorized money changers and offshore banking units. Their dealings are managed by the exchange control regulations provided by the RBI. Authorized dealers. The major foreign exchange trading undertaken in the country involves the end users and banks. Banks and other institutions permitted by the RBI to carry out these dealings are referred to as authorized dealers. they are licensed to execute all types of transactions relating to both current and capital accounts of the balance of payment third authorized money changers authorized money changers are further divided as full fledged and restricted money changers full fledged money changers are allowed to buy as well as sell for an exchange for example travel agencies restricted money changers are allowed to buy forex in the form of traveler's check or currency notes but they cannot sell the foreign exchange for example five star hotels offshore banking units offshore banking units refer to the various branches of banks in india which have established in the special economic zones the offshore banking units are permitted to carry out banking operations only in the designated foreign currencies essentially with non residents each such official banking units has a minimum startup capital of 10 million dollars and its balance sheet is prepared in designated foreign currencies let us now understand the components of the indian foreign exchange market forex markets can be classified on the premise of the types of transactions that are carried out that is whether the transactions are spot or forward on this basis there are two types of forex markets first spot market and second is forward market spot market spot market implies a market where the payments and receipts are made immediately 
Generally, a time of two business days is permitted to settle the transaction. Spot market is of daily nature and deals only in spot transactions of foreign exchange, not in the future transaction. The rate of exchange which commands in the spot market is referred to as the spot exchange rate or current rate of exchange. Forward market. Forward market is a market where selling and buying of foreign exchange or foreign currency is settled at a specific future date at a specified rate agreed upon today. The exchange rate quoted in forward transactions is known as the forward exchange rate. Generally almost all the international transactions are signed on one date and completed on a later date. Forward exchange rate becomes useful for both the parties involved in the transaction. The time period ranges from days to years. Currency swaps are a prominent type of forward transactions. These imply an exchange of currency by two parties for an agreed time frame and an arrangement to swap currencies at an agreed later date. Another type is a foreign currency future which is inclusive of interest. A standard contract is drawn up and a maturity date arranged. The time schedule is about three months. Forward contract is executed for two reasons. First, to minimize the risk of loss due to the unfavorable changes in the exchange rate that is through hedging and second, in order to make profits through speculations. Now we will discuss the significance of the foreign exchange market. The foreign exchange market is the mechanism through which purchasing power can be transferred from one country to another, credit for international transactions can be obtained and exposure to foreign exchange risk can be minimized. First, transfer of purchasing power that is clearing function. The core element of the forex market is to provide for the conversion of one currency into another that is payment between importers and exporters. For example, Indian rupee is converted into US dollar and vice versa. To carry out this function, various credit instruments are used such as telegraphic transfers, foreign bills and bank drafts. Second, credit function. The foreign exchange market supplies credit to both national and international to encourage foreign trade. It is necessary as sometimes the international payments get delayed for 60 days or 90 days. Obviously, when foreign bills of exchange are used in international payments, a credit for about 3 months till their maturity is required. Third, hedging function. Another function of foreign exchange market is to hedge against foreign exchange risk. Hedging signifies providing for the forex risk that arise out of the changes in the exchange rates. Under this function, the forex market protects the interest of the concerned persons from any unforeseen alterations in the exchange rate. The exchange rates in a free market may move upward and downwards. This can either be advantageous or disadvantageous for the transacting parties. Hedging can be executed by the means of a spot exchange market or a forward exchange market involving a forward contract. Some other advantages of the foreign exchange market. The foreign exchange market is extremely liquid, hence it is rapidly growing popularity. Currencies can be converted when purchased or sold without engendering significant price movement and the losses can be minimized. Next, since no central bank is there, trading can take place anywhere in the world and works on a 24 hour basis apart from weekends. Next, a small amount of investment is required as compared to the amount required in other investments. Forex trading is tremendous in this respect. Next, in common with futures, forex is transacted using a good faith deposit rather than a loan. The interest rate spread is an attractive advent. Now we will understand the limitations of the foreign exchange market. The main risk involved in the transactions is that one counterparty does not deliver the currency concerned with the very last transaction. In theory, at least this can bring failure to the entire foreign exchange market. A large amount of capital is required to make gains since the profit margins on small scale trades are very low. The increased amount of leverage means that traders may have to bear losses to a significant extent of their investment if the market moves significantly in a particular direction against the investor's current open position. Let us now recapitulate what we have learned from this module. Foreign exchange market in India is completely structured, efficiently regulated both by the RBI and also by voluntary associations known as FEDAI. Only dealers authorized by RBI can carry out foreign exchange transactions. All interbank dealings in the same center must be effected through accredited brokers 
who are the second arms in the market structures. However, between the authorized dealers and the RBI and also between authorized dealers and overseas banks are affected directly without the interventions of brokers. There is no designated physical market for currency exchange. Transactions are carried out over the counter. The foreign exchange market remains open 24 hours a day, 5 days a week and currencies are traded worldwide among the significant financial centers of London, New York, Frankfurt, Singapore, Tokyo, Hong Kong, Zurich, Sydney and Paris. In the forex market, there is very little or no inside information. Exchange rate variations are normally engendered by the actual monetary flows along with expectations on global macroeconomic situations. Significant information gets released publicly so that everyone in the world get access to the same kind of information at the same point of time. In the early 1980s, all FX, that is foreign exchange trading, was done by phone. Transparency was low and customer transaction costs were high. The lack of transparency resulted in greater levels of inter-dealers trading relating to end customer trading. In the early 1990s, the initiation of electronic brokers to the inter-dealer market brought a huge increase in transparency and the share of interbank trading began to fall even while trading volumes rose. The electronic revolution finally reached customers around 2000 when single bank platform and multi-bank platform allowed them to trade electronically with their dealers and with each other. Market transparency rose further, trade processing cost fell due to the straight through processing and customer bid ask spread fell rapidly. Retail trading was made possible by the commencement of a new type of internet based trading platform, the retail aggregator. Ongoing effects to monitor retail trading may bring further market changes in the future. Innovative trading strategies used in FX markets include white labeling, prime brokerage, algorithmic trading and high frequency trading. These innovations have entangled the strategic calculus of market making and could potentially undermine liquidity provision in a crisis. It would be difficult to lay undue emphasis on the significance of foreign exchange market for the world economy. They influence employment and output through real exchange rates. They affect inflation through the cost of imports and commodity prices. They influence the international capital flows through the risk and returns of various assets. Exchange rates are literally a main concern of policymakers and public and of course the media.